increase the cost of the inventory by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So there we have that. Now let's post it. Something's in inventory in cell N7. I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus, and then point to the inventory. That will make it go up in the debit direction. Now we're out of bounds by 110. I'm going to go to cash in N5 and say equals and point to the 110 and enter. That will make the cash go down and we're back in balance. So we're now on 7-8 where it says we sold merchandise for cash. All right, we sold for cash this time. So we're on 7-8. And once again, it's just like this journal entry up here, but now we sold it for cash. So is cash affected? Uh, yes, we, and, and we do want to think about this in terms of two journal entries again. So there's going to be a sales half. There's going to be a half having to do with inventory. The sales half has nothing to do with inventory. We can think of it as if it was a service industry. So is cash affected? Uh, yes, we received cash. So cash is going up. Cash is a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it one, two, three on top. And we sold it uh, for cash, sales price being uh, 2,200. So we're going to say it's 2200. And we're going to credit something for that same amount. So I'm going to credit something for the 2200 as well. And what are we going to credit? Why are we getting paid cash? Because we worked, we did something, and generated or earned revenue. And how did we work? We gave something. We gave the we gave the merchandise. So revenue, we can see here, is a sales account. And we could have called it anything. We could have called it income, revenue. It's all the same type of account. It's in the revenue account section. It has a credit balance. We need to make it go up. And it only goes up. Sales only goes one way, generally. So we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy that going to paste it one, two, three, right underneath. And I'm going to post this out and then talk and worry about the uh, inventory half of this journal entry. So something's in cash. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to go to the end of it. I'm going to say plus, and we can see what's in there. Anything related to cash, of course, should be in there. So we can see E15 in there. And now we're going to add to that this cell, which is in uh, D17 and enter cash goes up. Then we're going to go to sales. Same thing. Something's in there. So I'm going to double click. I can see what's in there. This sales account's in there. I'm going to say plus. Remember, there's never going to be a negative number in this area. The negative's in here. So we don't have to put a negative on this side. Always equals and pluses. I'm going to point to the 2002. Sales will go up. Net income will go up. And there we have that. Now we're going to have to say that, well, the uh, inventory must have gone down because we gave inventory away inventory has a debit balance we need to make it go down so i'm going to do the opposite thing to it which in this case is a credit so i'm going to copy that i'm going to skip a line here's where the new journal entry starts but i'm going to put it on the bottom so i'm down here on cell 21 right click and paste one two three and i'm going to put it in the credit column the amount being this one eight so i'm going to say negative one eight zero zero and we're also going to need a debit. So I'm going to put that on top and to the left of 1800. You could type it in there. I like to put this negative uh, and equals that sign to have everything kind of connected. And what's that going to be? That's going to be an expense related to us consuming the inventory in order to help us generate this revenue. That's called cost of goods sold. It is an expense account. Expense accounts have debit balances. They generally only go up. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. That debit will make net income go down. Let's see that as we post that. I'm going to double click on the cost of goods sold. We can see that this account is in there. I'm going to go to the end of it and plus, then point to the 1.8. And this should go up in the debit direction like so. And it brings net income down. Note that we're saying here is income is the good. The credit is actually the good thing on the income statement minus the expenses adds up to the 88 i mean the 858 that's our net income then we're going to go to merchandise inventory up here in n7 double click go to the end and i'm going to say plus and point to this i uh, amount here now of course we're getting a lot of stuff in here but just remember that it should be everything related to the merchandise inventory and we're going to say enter and if we want to see what's in there, we can always click on this and it's in the data tab uh, or the formulas tab. And we could go to this trace 
and that will show you the numbers that are in there. So this minus this plus this minus this makes up the 5,000 plus this minus this plus this minus this will bring us to the 9268. I usually keep those up here because I really like those and so I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so now we're going to go to the 7979 and sell B23, which says that we purchased merchandise from L Company, terms 2, 15, and 30. And before I go into that any further, I just want to point out that when we recorded this accounts receivable up here, this was this $1,000. It was from C Company. We should report that in our subsidiary ledger as well. So I'm actually going to post that in the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. You can see it has a red zero here because it's saying, hey, your subsidiary ledger here doesn't tie out to the here. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to say here C owes us that 1000. So I'm going to say that 1000 is owed from C. And now we have the 1000 ties out. The 1000 adds up to here. We can see who owes it. It's C. Same with this one. The 65 on the on the payable side is owed by B. That's why we have a green number there. All right. So now 79 purchase merchandise from L company terms 215 and 30. So we're purchasing the merchandise. We're purchasing it from L and the terms mean that we get a 2% discount if we pay within 15 days. Otherwise we have to pay it within 30 days or they might come after us at that point in time. And so we're going to record it at this time uh, as if we're not going to take the discount. And then if we take the discount, then we'll account for that when we uh, pay the payment. So we don't really even need to know this for this point. We're going to need to know it when we make the payment if we pay it within 15 days. We do need to know that we paid it on account. So is cash affected? No, we paid it on account. That's why we have terms. And therefore, I used to like to think to what did we receive? We received inventory. Inventory is an asset. Assets have debit balances, as we can see here with no brackets. We need to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it on top. I'm going to right click and paste it one, two, three. So then we're going to have to put um, the amount being um, 7925 and we're going to credit something for the same amount. So what's the amount that will be credited? Well, it's not cash because we bought it on account. It's going to be accounts payable. Accounts payable has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put our cursor in C24, right click, paste it, one, two, three. So now let's post this out. So I'm going to go up here to merchandise inventory. Something's in it. I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus, point to this two, five, and enter. Merchandise inventory goes up. Then we're going to go to accounts payable. I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus, and then point to the accounts payable. And this is a credit. This is a credit. I'm going to make the accounts payable go up in the credit direction. So there we have it. Back and balance. No effect on net income from that transaction. All right. Next transaction. We're getting down on the, on the bottom here. We're going to say at 711. Uh, we return merchandise. Oh, one thing we should do. Note if I go over here that it's it's not it's red now which indicates it's bad because the 65 does not equal the 900 and that's because now we have to represent the fact that on the subsidiary ledger for accounts payable uh, who owes us money L owes us money so over here in the credit side for L and V18 I'm gonna say that equals the credit of 25 and enter and now we have the 9000 here ties out to the 9000 here and we're back in balance and we're good to go. So now 711. Okay, so we returned merchandise to L. So that means there was defective merchandise and we gave it back to L. We said this is defective, we counted it, it doesn't work or something's wrong with it. We're gonna give it back to L. If L accepts it, then they'll give us a refund. Now, uh, in this case, of course, we have not yet paid L. So is L gonna give us cash? Is cash affected? No, he didn't, we didn't pay him yet. So what's going to happen then is we're going to reduce the payable that is owed. So again, it's kind of harder a lot of times for people to think about the payable. It's a lot easier a lot of times to think about which way the inventory is going. So inventory has a debit balance. We gave it back. So it needs to go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it. 
which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to the bottom of it. So there's the. I'm going to go to the bottom of the uh, and cell twenty or row twenty-seven. Right-click, paste it one two three. We gave back inventory that cost us five hundred dollars. Then we're going to have to debit something. Again, if if we paid cash for it, then we he, maybe they give us cash back. But we haven't paid them yet, so we have to debit the payable. Payable has a credit balance. If we debit it, it'll make that balance go down. So I'm going to right-click, copy that gonna put it in cell C26 right click and paste it one two three so let's post that out and see what happens so we're gonna go to the accounts payable and cell N uh, N8 double click on it go to the end of it plus and I know we have to scroll down a little bit I'm using my scroller to scroll down a little bit so I can see the last journal entry we made there's the 500 I don't have to scroll back up to hit enter I can just hit enter now and it does it for me. So if I scroll up a little bit, there it is. So now it went down from 9,000 down to 85. Then the second account will go to the merchandise inventory. Another thing you can do here, if you want to see it all on one page, is we can look, we can shorten the screen from 100 down to like 80 or so, and we can see more of the screen at one time. And we can go to the merchandise inventory, double click, go to the end of it, and plus. And then I'm going to point to the 500 credit. That will put us back in balance, bring our inventory down when we hit enter. Okay, so now you can see that once again we have this negative uh, or this red 9,000 here. And that's because uh, we don't owe L5,000 anymore because we gave back some of the inventory. So we're going to debit part of that. So I'm basically just going to record this again in uh, U19 for this 500 meaning that we owe L now 2,000, we owe B 6,5 for a total of 8,5, that ties out to our subsidiary ledger. So we need to know that because we need to know who we owe the money to, obviously, and we need to know who owes us money so we can uh, collect and pay as needed. All right, so now we're gonna go down to uh, B 29, where we have 712, and we received the balance due from C company for invoice on 72. So C company now paid us. Now notice there's no dollar amount there. We're gonna go, how are we gonna find that out? Well, we can look at our receivable. Now, in this case, it's pretty basic because there's only one person that owes us money, but if there were more people in there, then we'd have to look at the subsidiary ledger over here and say, well, who owes us that money? And we could see that C owes us that entire $1,000. Now, the question is, did they pay us within the discount period? And if we look over here, they're supposed to pay us within 10 days, and that happened on 7-2, and they paid us on 7-12. Uh, so they did just make it within the 10 days, so they're going to get a discount. So they're not actually going to pay us the $1,000. They're going to pay us $1,000 less the discount. So there's a couple different ways we can think about how to get the discount amount. So let's, let's do that now. We know that is cash affected? Yeah, we're gonna get paid cash. We got the check in the mail from C for the sale that was made in the past, terms 210 and 60. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna paste it, one, two, three. And then we could try to think about the amount. A couple ways we can calculate this. If we pull out the trusty calculator here, we sold it for $1,000. We gave a 2% discount times 0.02 so that means that we're going to give a discount of $20 $20 minus $1,000 means we're going to get 980 we can also think of it is if we're thinking a 2% discount out of 100 100 would be 1 minus 2% minus 0.02 means that if we're not going to get 2% we are going to get 98% and we can just take that 98% times the 1000 so when we're thinking about when we're going to a store and we see discounts on the store, this might be an easier way to calculate. It's a one step kind of way to calculate it. We can just say that we have cash is going to be received 1000 sales price times if we're going to get a 2% discount, we're collecting 0.98%. That's how much we are getting and enter. So there's the cash that we're going to get. Then I often like to think about uh, the receivable going down because that's the normal thing that happens and this receivable needs to go to zero. So this 1,000 needs to go to zero. So it has a debit balance. I need to make it go down. 
I'm gonna do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So I'm gonna copy that, gonna put it here, paste it, one, two, three. It's gonna be a credit, not of the 980 though, it's gonna be a credit of the 1000. Notice that if I put a credit of 980,